So as many of you know, our friends in the UK have a general election coming up, and if Tories and Boris Johnson are able to hang on to their majority in Parliament, Boris Johnson has already made it clear, he's signaled pretty explicitly to Donald Trump that he'd be willing to use their NHS as a bargaining chip in trade negotiations, meaning he would open the door to even more privatization in the United Kingdom and allow private American companies to profit off of healthcare in the UK. Now, Jeremy Corbyn, as the leader of labor, has sounded the alarm over this, and rightfully so, because even though nobody's accusing Boris Johnson of wanting to fully privatize or Americanize their NHS, well, even if you just give these for-profit vultures an inch, they're going to take a mile. So you have to make sure that you protect what you've managed to obtain and opening the door to these for-profit companies, it's, it's just bad. All around, it is bad. So there is an educational campaign going on by proponents of Britain's NHS. And the way that they are trying to educate people about the dangers of privatization is by pointing to the United States. And there's a video from Politics Joe, and basically they just talk to random people on the streets, and they asked them what they thought the price of a particular uh, medical procedure was in the United States. And what you're going to see is genuine shock based on how expensive our healthcare system is. And this should really put things in a perspective for people in America. This is how people react when they're told about our healthcare system. Ambulance call out, how much do you think that costs? Zero payment. Zero payment? Yeah, zero payment. No. It costs two and a half thousand dollars. For for real? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you look, you look. <laughs> An inhaler. A hundred dollars. Yeah, you're pretty close, it's a bit more. 120. 250 to 350. For an inhaler? Mm. Yes. Man, so if you're poor, you're dead. I know that it's like public health care in the UK. In the US, fortunately, I'm able to get health care through my parents, their jobs, but like I carry an EpiPen. And I know that like the cost of that has just been rising. Mm -hmm. So like there's like very few companies that even compete. So it's sort of like a monopoly for the EpiPen. Um, even though like we have insurance, it costs my parents about a couple hundred, even with insurance. So two EpiPens, okay. how much do you reckon they are? Eighty dollars. Six hundred. Forty dollars? I'm afraid not. More? More. Hundred dollars. More. Hundred and fifty. More. Two fifty. More. Sh shut the fridge. More. <laughs> Three hundred pounds. Six hundred dollars. Yeah. What? Why? That's a very good question. Six hundred dollars? Yeah. For me it's more like just hives and shortness of breath yeah. so it wouldn't be like an immediate death situation but like so i've been fortunate i've not had to use it mm. but it's something like keep on me like i have my backpack right now i have it on me cost of childbirth jesus um 50 grand something ridiculous now yes yeah, yeah i've blown i've blown the figures up on your head now haven't yeah, i because yeah. they're larger it's the highest generally speaking is about 30 grand okay okay uh, wait, I oh, is that reasonable you have not reasonable that. at all <laughs> <laughs> it's just like now we're on like uh, we're on yeah, a benchmark yeah, we're on a 100 200 dollars uh, the average is about 10 grand. It can go up to 30,000. 10 grand? <laughs> For a baby? Well, yeah, well, I guess. <laughs> How much is your child worth? Uh, yeah. What, is that like the same everywhere? Yeah, the average is about $10,000, yeah. That's mad. Mm. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> um, okay, no thanks. In which case, the coil, IUD, contraception. Okay. Yeah. How much do you think that costs? For one person yeah. to implant... A grand? Yeah, a little bit higher. Really? Yeah, $1,300. Oh. <sighs> Mental. I wonder if you could tell me how expensive you think calling an ambulance out to your location is in America. I guess it depends on like where you live. <laughs> uh, it really does. Um, I even, is there a price for that? Yes. Jeez, um, $100, $200? Two and a half grand. For what? Why? <laughs> Why? Give birth by C-section yeah. and you would like to hold your baby after you've given birth to it. Naturally, yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> yeah. You have to pay to do that? Yes. To hold my own child that I've been carrying inside of my 
womb. <laughs> Say something else. <laughs> so, yeah, I was. <laughs> uh, but yes, yes. Jeez. It's not actually that expensive. Right. <laughs> Charging me. I'm going to punch you. Yeah. Um, not you, but yeah. the doctor. Um, like a hundred dollars. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. For skin on skin contact. <laughs> what do you think of the NHS? Literally the gift that keeps on giving. Literally. Literally. People are so dumb for taking advantage of it. Mm. And I don't want it to change. Finally, does it make you grateful for the NHS? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I didn't know how much uh, free healthcare we got, like, just off the bat, but, like, knowing you have to pay, like, 30 grand for a child, it's outrageous. It really is ridiculous. So, thank you, NHS, um, for your hard work. I'm genuinely speechless. Presumably, you had an idea that it, healthcare was expensive I in the US. I didn't realise how expensive. Yeah, I'm just like, what? Like, if you don't have money, you're... Well, yeah, You're fudged, yeah. What do you think of the people who are profiting off the sale of these medicines? You bastards. <laughs> I th <laughs> Sorry, beep. I think, yeah, I, I think they should be stopped. Yeah. Fuck Trump. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredibly fascinating to watch. When the man uh, who was asked what he thought the cost of an ambulance ride would be, he said, free. Because, I mean... Instinctively, you just think that's an emergency. So, of course, the government takes care of emergencies like that. I mean, you call the fire department to put out fires. So why would it be different if you need to call an ambulance? But when he was told that it was 200 and or $2,500, he was genuinely shocked. In fact, most of these people were genuinely shocked. And I need people to understand in America that if you don't believe Medicare for all is the way to go, you are being duped because that's how people react when they're told about the American system. And our system is this horrible because it is profit driven, right? It's privatized to its core. Our system isn't about the delivery of healthcare since it is run by private companies mostly. Well, their goal is to increase shareholder value and increase profits. It's not about healthcare, it's about profits. And this is what you get. A shitty healthcare system where, as one person put it, if you're poor, you're dead. Exactly. Except here in the United States, we've been brainwashed so much that the prospect of removing the profit motive from that healthcare system is um, conflated to taking away choice. I mean, literally, you can see Democratic Party politicians like Pete Buttigieg saying that if we advocate for Medicare for all, we are in favor of taking away choice. And people believe it. People actually believe that bullshit and propaganda. I mean, it, it's just, it's remarkable. There's no choice. The choice, if you get sick in the United States, if you don't have health insurance, is to either die or go to the emergency room and then go bankrupt when you get the bill that you obviously will never be able to pay. It is just a broken system that's so pathetic that other countries have to use us as an example of what not to do. And we are the richest country on the planet. And it's not just the UK. Back in 2008, when there were more talks of privatization in Canada, studies pointed to the United States as what not to do. Because if you privatize a greater portion of healthcare, well, costs will go up and health outcomes will get worse. I mean, it's sad that this is the fact of reality, but I really hope that they do learn from us in the UK. Because if you allow for privatization, like a virus, it will creep into your system and ruin it. You're not going to see the effects of it right away, but 10 years down the line, when you realize that you're, you're getting less for what you pay for, you're going to realize that it was privatization that did just that. And what's remarkable about the UK is that even if Tories and, you know, Boris Johnson are trying to privatize the NHS, um, they're not trying to do it, you know, entirely. They're trying to take it step by step, chip away at it, right? Death by a thousand cuts. But they can't even do it overtly. They have to basically do it covertly and in this insidious way so people don't really know about their true agenda and they have to pay lip service to the NHS and talk about how much they love the NHS. But here in the United States, the party that's supposed to represent the working class and be left-wing Democrats, they're openly against Medicare for All, which doesn't even go as far as the national health system. So do you understand 
how the Overton window in the United States is so much further to the right than it is in the United Kingdom. Like, if I were a benevolent dictator and I could get any policy I wanted, I would opt for a national health system over Medicare for All, because I don't just want the government to be the single insurer uh, paying private hospitals. I want those hospitals to be owned by, by the public, because I, I believe there should be no profit motive in healthcare whatsoever. Whatsoever. So, I really hope that people in the UK don't take their system for granted, and they learn from the mistakes that we've made and fight like hell to protect what they've managed to accomplish because that NHS system, you guys already have 10% of it that is made up by, you know, private insurers. Don't let any more in. That's already far too much. And you see the effects of what that 10% does. These private for-profit health insurance companies will always want a larger share of the pie and they will never stop fighting to get that. Now, to give you some more statistics here with regard to just how bad the American system is, we spend almost double the OECD average relative to our GDP, and our per capita spending is more than other developed countries, yet we're not getting better health outcomes. We're just being ripped off. Life expectancy is lower than most developed countries. We have one of the worst infant mortality rates, and overall, I mean, it, it's really obvious that even though we're paying more, we're not getting what we're paying for. And speaking of costs, we spend billions of dollars every single year on administrative costs. This is unnecessary. It's a waste. But we have to spend that money because when you have a for-profit system, that requires a really large bureaucracy for billing and, you know, insurance and whatnot. So our system, again, is so pathetically broken that other countries always have to point to us as an example of what not to do. If you are an American and you still buy into this false choice argument, you have been duped. Our system is so cruel and inhumane that there are private companies that have openly questioned if curing patients is a sustainable business model. They've literally questioned that. So how can you even defend this system? The answer is it's indefensible. If you have a healthcare system that is based on profit, you change the goal of that system. It's not about the delivery of healthcare. It's about increasing shareholder value and increasing profits. If you're in the UK or any other country with either a single payer or national health system where it's free at the point of service, don't take that for granted. Understand what you got and realize it could be way worse. Fight for it. And, you know, what's interesting is that this is really generational. A lot of people in the UK grew up um, not really knowing what it's like to not have health care. Uh, people in countries like Canada, for example, they don't ever have to worry about health care. David Dole talks about this all the time, who's a Canadian. You know, in the United States, this is something that consumes us. We have to argue with our insurance providers on the phone. We have to apply and reapply every single year. It is such a hassle and it's cruel. So we're being duped in America. And I really hope that if, you know, you know someone who's still reluctant or afraid of Medicare for all, show them videos from people around the world who learn about our system because that will put things into perspective for them. We are getting duped, we're being taken advantage of, and it's about time we finally stand up and demand what's right, demand what other people have in other countries, what they take for granted. And if you're in the UK, I mean, if you allow Tories to win and privatize your system, and you don't put up a fight, I don't know what to tell you, that's just stupid. You don't want an American healthcare system. You don't want it to be anywhere close to what we have. Trust me, as an American with firsthand experience dealing with our cruel system, you don't want this fight to keep what you got. Trust me, you will regret it if you lose what you have.